probably the hugest conversation that we have with everyone. And it's really handled best in coaching because uh, generally speaking, these are very personal, mm -hmm. right? We're finding that it's very subjective. What to someone else is a great thing actually to another person is a trigger. Yes. Right? So for example, uh, someone will say, uh, somebody at work noticed that I've lost weight and they were asking me a million questions about it. And that really made me feel very uncomfortable and put me in a position to try to be some sort of expert. And that was horrible. And I came home and I ate a bagel, you know, so. <laughs> or, so yeah, it, I felt very defensive. Yeah, and yeah. like I had to defend the program, I had to defend my actions. Right. So that, and then another person, interestingly, same week, said somebody at work noticed that I lost twenty pounds, Ooh. and I was so excited because this pe person is so fit and so beautiful, and she noticed, and she was really complimentary, and uh, and that was just great. I felt wonderful right. about it. So it's very interesting how somebody's. You know, it's like somebody's garbage is someone else's treasure, right? It's like somebody's trigger point is actually great for someone and or, vice versa. Or terrible. Right. So, so it's very personal. Right. Um, but what we're realizing is that triggers and pain points fall into to patterns, right? Mm -hmm. Triggers are usually emotional, right? Triggers are usually things that we know bother us. We know they're going to happen but we don't know when or, or ha you know, what's going to be the circumstance that, that happens, but we know what the trigger is right. and we can actually plan for that. So we can, we can realize that like in that case, when somebody is going to notice that you've lost weight in the person's case where that's a negative, where they feel, Oh, I, I'm on the spot. I don't like that. We need to give those people the empower them to know what to say and what to do to step back from that. Right. And the same same would be true if if someone is instead of praising them, they're critical. That's right. So those so those are, are are trigger points that we can address ahead of time. And depending on the personality of the person, we can adjust how their reaction would be. Mm -hmm. Right. So some people feel better if they can take a strong position and say, um, yes, I am losing weight and I am doing it on a keto lifestyle. And if they get a negative response, they can say, you obviously don't understand it, right? right? They, they can I take mean, that position. You're entitled to your opinion. opinion, but it doesn't affect what I'm doing. Exactly. Or there's a softer approach that seems to be working for some people that is more like, oh, I really appreciate you noticing really busy, got to go. And just like drop the whole subject. Don't even address it. Don't just let them. it go. Let's just let it go. So, and then there's everything in between. So right. there's like that soft approach and then there's that hard approach. So it depends on who you are, but the point I'm trying to make is that in order for us to be effective with all of you as coaches, we just need you to think about, you don't have to think of the solution, but you just have to think about what are the things that kind of like trigger you emotionally, mm -hmm. right? So another one of our, our people that we're coaching um, said that what really triggers her, or it's, it's kind of amazing, is that she's really diligent about putting everything in her tracker. Yes. Right? Everything she eats, every bite, she puts it in her tracker because she feels she needs to be complete on that. Right. But it's also a really big, like, then she starts to get insane about it. She, it's like the scale. I've, she gets so centric on it that it's, it's right. uncomfortable. Right, she's obsessed with it. But I think it's also, she feels more in control. That's right. And then, and control is kind of an issue. So, so what we want to do is we want to, you want to think about, make a list, note down for yourself when something triggers an emotional response with you and it starts to get in. The main thing is we don't want it to get in the way of your success. So you, we're, we are shooting for smooth seas, flat road, happy experience. That's where we want to go. So when you see those potholes, those things that you know, freak you out or piss you off or whatever it is, let's make a note of it and let's address it. Mm -hmm. So another, just as an example, another person is shopping. It drives them insane going to the store and A, trying to find the keto friendly products, drives them crazy. Trying to read the labels and understand the, the labels mm -hmm. is a big deal. And also they feel like there's obstacles. They want to make certain recipes. They want to do certain things. And where they live, 
they can't find some ingredient that's really important. Those are all manageable. All, all of those, mm -hmm. all of those things are easy to take care of. We just need to know, and then we'll help figure it out. So I guess what I'm trying to say is on the trigger side, if you define a trigger as something that you know bothers you and has gotten in your way in the past, make a note of it and let's find a solution. Um, can you guys give me any other ideas of what triggers, like I gave you some examples, but do you have any, uh, can you give some suggestions of what, what are your triggers? What are the things that make you feel anxiety and then may turn into like, I got to stuff my face, <laughs> you know, any others that we didn't, that we didn't cover? Any, any thoughts? I got to drink my Or is that good? Maybe we covered that. I, I, maybe we're... Right. There is one other one is just, oops, there is um, one other one that's really common is just feedback. Feedback from people in your family. Like, um, I think it was Janine said yesterday, luckily she's very much surrounded by people that are very supportive and that is the optimal case. That is what we love for you and what we want for mm -hmm. you. But it's not the, it's not common, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. It is the least common, so right. super lucky. Um, I know, um, like I was, I was married before, divorced, single, and now remarried. Me too. And I know in my previous life, that's what I refer to as my previous life, um, I didn't have a lot of support and I was not in a good frame of mind. So for me, the only thing was to just eat, eat and drink. That's all I cared. And you know what? It was my state. Congratulations yeah. to you, yeah. by the way, good for you <laughs> yes. that instead of staying where you were unhappy and sick and not, not being supported, that you moved yeah. into your new life. Do you right. know how many yeah. women don't do that? People, not just women, men and women don't do that, right? It's I'm actually married 25 years. Totally with you. It was right after our 25th anniversary that there was an event that happened and that was it for me. You see that that kind of emotional like crisis, that. yeah, that's the kind of thing that triggers a lot of people going down a path of self destruction, right? And and look at you like you've turned it around. You turned the you're in your new life and you're creating new you. Right. I knew I had fabulous respect for you, <laughs> fabulous Janine. So, uh, but however, the, lucky that you were smart enough and, and had the strength to do that. But um, there's so many people that we're dealing with, and what we realize is that we can help them rebuild their their food plan their lifestyle their health their drinking water their exercise but we are uncovering we are spotlighting a bigger issue for them right so many of them are coming to the conclusion that one of the reasons they're not where they want to be is because they don't have the support that they need and so that in some cases is really good right it leads to a really honest conversation between people that says you know what uh, for example, I supported you when X, Y, Z, and now I need your support in ABC. And it actually ends up being a very positive thing. In some cases, not, but, Maybe not. you know, <laughs> you can't take a, a, a really responsibility for that. But if, if it's support, there are there is hope, right? You can get support from the people around you. You just sometimes need to know if the relationships are solid, you just need to know what to say, right? Some people just aren't sure what to say. And if they have a long legacy of failure, a lot of people just are cynical. Right. And, so we can help with that. And we realize in, in many cases, the it's the underlying cause. It's how people feel about themselves. Yeah, it's, it's, it's their self-image yeah. that is driving a lot of these, you could say, bad habits. or uh, and, and that until they deal with those underlying issues... The, the question of what they eat and their exercise is not going to be resolved. It's trivial by it's comparison. Not gonna, it's right. not going to be resolved. But anyway, so triggers, you just need to um, think about um, what are the things, you know, what are the things that uh, cause that? And it doesn't have to be people. It could be, it could be Well, Jay Kelly just wrote a comment in the chat there. She said that one of her triggers is the macros when she goes over. She gets... She gets a screwed attitude. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. That, by the way, 100%. All the foods added to me. Yeah. Uh, and all or nothing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. 100%. That is probably, so it's, it's, 
you know that you're supposed to be keeping track of things, but then you start to get nuts with it. And if you don't exactly meet your goal, it makes you even makes more you crazy. crazy. Yeah. So there's, there's a ton of things that we can do with that. So first of all, you know that guideline about 20 net carbs. Okay, so that guideline is real. That That's a scientifically based guideline for optimal, optimal, optimal weight optimal. loss. I'm going to say 80% or so of the people we're dealing with are not at 20. No. They're not. Okay, the, just so you know. They're at 30 or 40. And they're doing great. They're absolutely doing great. And I believe that I don't check their keto slip strips, but I believe they're in ketosis because they've got all of the other symptoms, right? They've got high energy, they've got focus, they're sleeping well, they're losing weight. So I think they're in ketosis, but the 20 is really good and it's but it's really strict. And I notice with clean keto, sometimes it's a little hard to stay with 20. Maybe you're at 22, 25. And that's okay. Because you want to eat some broccoli which is fine. <laughs> Go eat broccoli. It's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but any obsession, I guess the point of this module is any obsession or any pain point that you recognize, you realize that this is a problem for you. It's a challenge. We need to address it specifically for you. We give, I have to give you a workaround because that can be like, we're on this journey. This can be like road construction and they're diverting traffic. You know what I mean? Like you can't right. get past this point. Right. It's, yeah. it's like being scale happy. It's you know, scale happy, you, right? You're like you're obsessed with the scale and you have to weigh yourself 10 times a day. Um, and if you're not exactly where you want to be, then it makes you crazy. Right. And so we're such yeah. strong achievers. Go ahead. No, I was just agreeing. Like, oh, yes, okay. exactly yeah, we're a, a lot of us, like you'll notice, we attract people that relate, they identify, they identify themselves with their achievements and their failures. Like, honestly, if we ask a person, tell me a little bit about yourself, their conversation falls into, I'm really good at and I really suck at. Like, that's how they, desc that's how they describe it's, themselves. It's like one extreme or the right, other. It's really interesting. And so if you are a person who identifies with achievement and this thing is getting in your way, it's emotionally very negative and this stuff doesn't work. Like trying to change your life for the better really doesn't work without you starting to like yourself and starting to appreciate mm -hmm. yourself. And if you keep looking at this thing, like being scale happy or, or you know, macro happy, whatever it is, and you know it's in your way and you're not overcoming it, it, it makes you nuts. Okay, so we need well, to figure that out. Right? Very frustrating, right? Very frustrating. Feeling. Right? You're working so hard at something. You know, like you're building a house and every day you go back and half of it fell down. Right? Yeah. Like you're, oh my right. God, what the and hell? You know? You, you associate your value, your self-worth with, well, wow, today it was at 25. Well, I'm a failure. I, I know. <laughs> it's crazy. So you can't replace the scale with macros. Right. Another person, it was like, I've got to do 60 minutes a day of exercise and I just completely fall apart at 40 minutes. I can't go beyond 40 minutes. And I was like, um, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. So, so to get where you are right now, where hundred pounds need to be lost, how much exercise have you been doing up till now? Oh, zero, nothing. Okay. <laughs> so, so we've gone from zero to 40 minutes and you're crying. You're yeah. like upset that you can't get to 60. Can, can we cool your jets for yeah, just 10 minutes, take really? A step, <laughs> take a step back. Right? Give yourself a break. Man. Right? You're mean. You're mean to, your, and again, to yourselves, it's, right? It's, it's this, this, this having to rush. Yeah. People are in a rush. Right. And overcome things. Overcome things. So in a day. If, like I told you yesterday, we use this analogy a lot, and you really need to start thinking of yourself as, as another person. Another person that you're taking care of and everything suddenly makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's really weird. So this other person says, I can't stay within my macros. God damn it. I am, I'm doing all this stuff and it's not working. It's right. Right. And the, what would you say? You would say, oh, it's okay. You'll right? get you're, there. You'll get there. You're trying. Let's see what you're eating. Maybe you really need to be at 25. Maybe you really need to be at 30. Yeah. Let's review this. Let's make it right for you. That person would calm down. They would be successful. But right. you won't do that for yourself. For yourself, you're like, right. no, it has to be, and you know, 20. People see the 20 and 
it becomes like this this absolute. Yeah, yeah, that, just like the scale. Right. If it's it goes up like a pound, the twenty right. is right for everyone. Right. Right. So and, and whatever your obsessions are, whatever those anxiety points are, like macros, um, like shopping list, mm -hmm. like uh, people's attitude at work or any of those kinds of things, stepping on the scale and God forbid it went up a pound, which by the way, normal healthy bodies, and it fluctuates. If, if, especially if you're weighing yourself too often, is going to fluctuate. I could I can look at a scale and I could be up two pounds. I could be down two pounds. It's just, it's water weight. It's hormones. It's not getting enough sleep. And, you know? and you know, from one day to the next, your kind of your program, your regime is is the same. Right. Think like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this um, diagram, but when you're in a biology class, they show you this picture or maybe even a film of an amoeba. Like it's this big watery thing that moves around. It's blob. It's just a blob, right? It's amoeba. And they tell you that amoeba, as it moves along, it absorbs water, it, it excretes water, it absorbs molecules of other things. So if you look at, at point like second number five, it, it actually takes up so much mass. And in about eight seconds, it could be double that mass. Right, but it's the same amoeba. It's just whatever it's encountered along but then, the way. And then, right? then a few seconds, minutes later, it, it's, it's even back, less, you know, or even less. Right, right. It, it just keeps doing this. It's like a sponge. Right, if you wring it out, it weighs so much. If you fills with water, it weighs so much. Human bodies are exactly the same way, and nobody wants to believe that, or because they like to feel like I weigh 120 pounds. Like I always weigh 120 pounds, no matter what happens to me. I weigh 120 pounds. And, it's not really true. Right. And people want to, again, feel as if they're in control. That's right. But honestly, depending on, like, especially for women, but it's also true for men. Human beings over the course of, like, a month have hormonal cycles. You have to to live. You have to it's to live. So your hormonal cycles are like a chemical gradient. Like, they keep doing this kind of cycling thing. And then if you're healthy, that's a good thing, right? Right. You also have factors like water that you drink or don't drink, salt that you eat or don't eat, how much sleep you get, how much exercising you're doing. If you're exercising in a sweaty way, like how much sweat you've uh, excreted, um, losing weight, all those things, like over the course, if you charted it over a month, it kind of does this. It doesn't do that or mm -hmm. this, right? Right. And people get freaked out. That's a trigger. So that's why we always talk about the scale being like at the most a once a week thing. Mm -hmm. And we're all guilty of jumping on the scale. I have to put it in a cabinet to prevent myself from doing that because I'm scale happy. <laughs> I really am. Um, so anyway, my point is that uh, we got to think about what makes us crazy and we've got to address it. Because our failure in the past, I can speak from personal experience, our failure in the past is saying that this thing makes me crazy and it is not important enough to me to resolve this. I'll just suffer. <laughs> I'll suffer. just deal with it and suffer. And that's stupid. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. That's just a stupid thing to do. It's not virtuous. So, so what I'm saying is trigger points are personal. Make sure you write them down. So yesterday, um, Janine, actually, you mentioned about looking at nutritional facts. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think we address that, that, that the problem is there's too much information. Right. And a lot of it's irrelevant. And to it's us. confusing. It's people call things different things. So I went through like a bunch of labels yesterday to just make sure that I'm clear on this. And really, there's only like two, maybe three that really matter in the whole thing. Right. So one is obviously carbs. And in that world, in the nutritional facts world, the software that creates those labels, by the way, there's software that creates those labels, the carbohydrates that they're talking about is total. Okay. It's always total. Total. It's yeah. never net unless it says net. Okay. So it's always total. That's a good thing to know. And that when you, if you see fiber, you must subtract it. Okay, that, if you're doing net carbs, you've got to subtract it. And it's really better for you. It gives you more flexibility to do that. Those are the two most important numbers. Also the sugars. That was just going to say. Yeah. The second thing, which is not as important because it is, it is included in the total carbs. So if you notice, no matter where you see sugars, if you see three and you see total carbs 10, three is included in the 10. So you've already taken it into account with the, 
the total carbs. So really those two numbers, carbs and fiber are the most important things. But if you want some people that are super, super focused on this, also look at sugars as a separate item, sugar alcohols or any right. other thing that's listed as sugars. And just to make sure they have a clear margin, mm -hmm. they will subtract that as well yeah, I was just or gonna, add it, right. depending on how strict they want to be. I was just going to mention too, and maybe this is kind of a side issue, but portion size, what they say a serving is. Yes. So that's the other thing. And that's more recipe driven. Yeah. So um, the here's use an example. So the chocolate, double chocolate, decadent with ganache cake that we ate for breakfast. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. It was like living in Switzerland. Anyway, we had that for breakfast. Um, and that cake, when you cut it up into 16 pieces. So think about that for a second. So it's a pretty good sized cake. Cut it in half, right? cut it in quarters, and then each quarter is cut in a fourth. That's a sixteenth of a cake. It's still a pretty big piece of cake. It's, nice. yeah. it's, it's a big piece of cake. And you can eat two. If you wanted. You can eat two. In fact, we did. The first day, I think we did have two. But right. anyway, it's right. three carbs per slice. So in our food plans, everybody in the household, you know, put that in as our breakfast. There's a lot of great other, like in, in our food planner, I use myfitnesspal.com, there's protein, there's eggs. It's all part of the recipe. I can track it exactly, right? I know exactly what I ate. And so that's important because you need to think about what else the food contributes to. Mm -hmm. If you're checking and you're keeping track of protein, then you also are, you know, it's going to impact your protein. Yeah. Right. So that's just another thing to think about. Um, in my fitness planner, uh, myfitnesspal.com, they don't have that specific cake, and I know I'm going to make it again. So in that application, I can actually add it in. I can put in the carb count. I can put in the protein. I can you can manually in, enter that, and then it's there for me. So that's kind of a convenience. You don't have to do that. You could just put generally, like you could just put something general in to take the place. This is another obsession: macros in the planner is a real obsession because people go in and they're like, but that's not what I ate. It's not exactly it's what It's not I exactly <laughs> it. I'm going to say don't get crazy about it. Just generally right. try it. As a matter of fact, in my fitness pal, there was a entry for keto chocolate cake. Yeah, not exactly the same. Not cake. exactly the right. same cake. Yeah. But, but it's close enough. It's close. Right. Since this is for a lifetime, let's just remind ourselves, we are on a lifetime journey. It's not going to make a difference if, if Phil's cake that he put in is four carbs and our cake was three carbs. Right. Who cares? In the long run, like, it doesn't who matter. Who cares? It doesn't matter, right? He's not going to gain 10 pounds by tomorrow, right? So we're not going to worry about that. I, I, just, uh, I think I'm going to get a t-shirt that says, to be successful on keto, keep... Self love and cool your jets. I'm pretty sure those are the, those are the two things. That's true. Everybody has to do. Just calm so, down. So, any other triggers or, or comments on triggers? Not triggers, but I wanted to say I actually on my fitness pal too. If I find a recipe online, I can just enter the website and it'll import that recipe. Oh, for exactly. Oh, that's great. I didn't exactly. know that. Yeah, yeah. Isn't I mean, that cool? It was like magic. I was like, oh, rather than importing know that. every ingredient. Yeah, and actually, I've got to make sure that people, there's so many people using our food plan right now. I want to make sure that people realize that if they are linking with any of those people and pulling down a recipe, that they can do that. Not everybody uses my fitness pal. Do you happen to know, uh, Janine, you use Carb Manager, right? Can, can yeah. you do that on there? Does it allow you to do that too? I don't know if you can import recipes, but, but you can, can add them. definitely add a recipe mm -hmm. to it. Either way. Ingredients. Either way. It's just less stress. Like it's there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I also, I think both of the, all of the apps, there's about 10 of them, by the way, they allow you to save meals. So another thing, um, Selena, where you're going crazy with macros and you're spending a lot of time on your app, which we don't recommend, like it should only be a few minutes a day. Um, if you um, have a meal that you eat a lot, like something you really like, like we really love like a Tex-Mex meal with cheese crisps and a salad. I have that meal saved on my fitness pal. So I save it as my meals. 
And then when I ever have that, I just have to click it because it has a ton of ingredients, right? It has meat bits, it has cheese, it has salad, it has all these things. And it's just too much. To remember. It's too much. So all I have to do is choose that meal and it'll it'll pull it in for me. So that's another thing. That's I think I think 90% of those apps allow you to save a meal. So do that. It takes one more second to save it and name it. And then you've got that there for you that will help. And then in coaching, we'll go into more details about that. But definitely don't, if anything about this program is making you crazy, we need to know so we can like clear that away. Um, also, pain points are something else. So triggers are things that we can identify as we know they're going to happen. They have happened. We can create some solutions for mm -hmm. them and, and put that in our backlog, right? We know we've got that done. Pain points are a little bit different. So pain points can be something that over the course of your lifetime, a pain point can be something as basic as I've always gained weight back because I've never actually accepted my new body as my new body. So psychological people, psych psychologists call that a body dysmorphia, right? And one of the factors is body dysmorphia. I still do this. So um, I, I look in the laundry basket, I pull out a pair of pants, and to me, I'm doing this. These pants are this big, right? They're not, they're actually this big. Right. And, and they are my pants and I can put them on and zip them up and I can be comfortable in them. But in my crazy, like fat mind, when I look at these pants, they're only this big, <laughs> you know, they're just, they're that big. I'm still getting used to not having pants that are this big because more of my life was spent in, in pants this big than this big. So I am putting in mechanisms, right? Like, so for example, I used to avoid, if I came to a mirror or a reflection in a, like a plate glass window, I would immediately avert my eyes. Like that is my, that's my physical response is I don't want to look, you know? So it's just learned behavior. Mm -hmm. Now I am learning and actually liking, uh, when I see my reflection in a plate glass window or a mirror, I stop and I go, wow, is that me? That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Right on. Like I'm starting to look and appreciate, appreciate yourself it's really i know it seems like such a trivial thing but it isn't it really isn't it's real one of the pain points for a lot of us maybe not you guys is understanding that your body is transforming and accepting it and getting it comfortable with it right because without our comfort in our new bodies we will go back to our comfort zone you will see your primal nature will take you always back to your comfort zone. So you've got to reset mm -hmm. what your comfort zone is, right? So that's a pain point. Maybe you haven't hit yet, but telling you it's coming. Also, uh, having your picture taken. Having your picture taken. That's another thing. So I would say 90% of my life, I never wanted to have my picture taken, ever. I would hide. I would give excuses. If it was a group shot, I would put myself way at the back and I'm short so no one would see me. You know what I mean? Like it was my natural response. Most people that aren't feeling good about their bodies do, do the right. same thing. People tell us that. So having your picture taken is a really important thing, even if you only look at the picture. Don't show it to anybody else if you're mm -hmm. not comfortable, but you need to look at the picture and realize that that is you. And no, it is not the camera angle, <laughs> right? It really is it's not what the, you look like. It's not the lighting. No, it's not no. any of that. I constantly say, oh, yeah, I don't really look like that. That's just a great picture, but I, I, that's not real. No, no, actually, that's real. That's right. So anyway, I'm just saying, so pain points can be things that in the past made you fail and made you go back to your comfort zone. Uh, that's the one for me. I'm using that as an example. Um, do you guys have um, pain points, things that you know in the past got in the way of your success? And are we addressing them? That's that's the important question. Do you Have you thought about it? The thing that will, I will let sabotage me every time is comments from other people. Yeah. When I start getting to my goal weight like I feel comfortable I feel good and there are specific people in my life your empress of pain um, <laughs> I, how much weight have you lost it's time to stop now 
right. that kind of right. stuff. Right. Because they know better. It's hysterical. It's like clockwork. Yeah. 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 You can expect it. A pain point is something you can expect. So that's exactly the right criteria. So we've got to be ready for that. And not only be ready, we've got to figure out what 